Anyone who's ever visited a sandy ocean beach has certainly noticed the ripples of sand created by the flow of water, which later become exposed with the coming and going of the tide. These landmark current ripples are of course quite small, measuring in merely inches. And although they are not something that we would typically pay much attention to, they are nonetheless the result and obvious evidence that the ocean had once flowed over the area. However, what I'm about to share with you is so astonishing that by the end of this video, you will never think of these ripples of sand or the entire Sahara Desert in the same way ever again. You see, if a typical tidal current that is just a few feet or meters in depth can create sand ripples that are measured in merely inches, then what on earth would it take to create ripples that are, get this, more than a mile apart and literally hundreds of feet tall? That's right, so large in fact that they can only be truly appreciated from far above with the use of satellite imagery. What you're seeing here is more than 200 miles inland off the Atlantic coast of Mauritania in the western De uh, Sahara Desert of Africa. Smack dab in the middle of a remote region of the Sahara that has inexplicably massive amounts of water erosion that is so extreme that the striations can clearly be seen from space. And upon a closer look, you can see the same landmark current ripples that we observe on most any beach. However, instead of being measured in mere inches or feet, these ripples are so extraordinarily enormous that they are measurable in miles. That's right, in fact, the smallest of these ripples are closer to three quarters of a mile apart, with many right in the neighborhood of a mile, with some of the largest measuring 6,300 feet apart which equates to one and a quarter mile. And just a quick reminder that one mile equates to 5,280 feet or some 1,600 uh, meters. Now real quick, to put this into perspective, let me show you a short video clip that went viral a few years ago when Randall Carlson and Graham Hancock appeared on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast and shared the enormous current ripples in the middle of Montana that were created by the catastrophic flooding that occurred during the rapid melting of the North American ice shelf at the end of the last ice age. Just listen to what they have to say here. Rippled landscape that looks exactly like the beach looks. Yeah, yeah. keep coming around with That's that. That's the Let's... thing, it's fractal, because this, this yeah. is the, the whole mystery of this, that this happens at a scale of inches on beaches and a scale of hundreds of feet here. And there's a farmhouse. You see the farmhouse there? Mm. Now those ripples are, the tallest ones are about the height of a five-story building. Whoa, like 70 feet or something like that? Feet. 50, 50 feet? 50 okay. feet, okay. So that's, those are 50 feet high. Okay, let's pause again. Whoa. Look at this. This is crazy. This is totally crazy. This is one of the craziest things you'll ever see. This is, right this, here. these ripples, the repeated ripples in an area where there's nothing else like it. The closest, the closest we can get to it is a, is a tsunami. But even there, you got to picture the tsunamis that we've experienced in the last decade and a half. And, you know, in, in Indonesia and Japan, when they made landfall, those tsunamis were roughly between 20 and 50 feet, depending on where you were relative to the, to the oncoming wave and how far distant you were from it. Here, what you have to visualize is a tsunami sweeping over the land that's over 1,000 feet deep. That's, that's what happened here. And we know that because we can trace the, the, the high water marks on the hillsides are a clearly thousand. left. The high water marks are clearly etched into the, into the hillsides. Pretty mind blowing, right? So now the question becomes that if landmark current ripples that are 50 feet tall and just shy of 300 feet apart as I measured on Google Earth and were created by a flow of water that was 1,000 feet deep, then what on earth happened to create ripples that are 200 feet tall and again exceeding more than a mile apart? But if that isn't incredible enough, this is where things become spectacularly strange, as I'm about to share with you three pieces of evidence that are so unbelievably compelling that they corroborate that this water erosion occurred in just the last 11 to 12,000 years. Now real quick, before I show you that, let's first be clear. These are not sand dunes. They are indeed ripples created by forces of flowing water, just like we see at the beach. For example, let's take a look at what actual confirmed sand dunes look like in comparison. And there is perhaps no better example than the sand dunes of Namibia, which rank among the largest dunes found anywhere on Earth, and are conveniently geographically located right at the coastline of the Atlantic Ocean, 
which provides us a fantastically ideal comparison as we're able to observe sand dunes and ocean current ripples at the same location. And although these massive sand dunes can give a similar appearance to the landmark current ripples, upon a closer inspection you can certainly distinguish the difference in that they are made entirely of sand. Whereas in the Sahara, you have the visible marks of water eroded bedrock that have taken the shape of current ripples in the same way that we see at the beach. These massive current ripples have been confirmed by subject matter experts such as Randall Carlson. And you know, I can't help being reminded of what I noticed not long ago while taking a walk along an irrigation canal not far from where I live. You can see the same water induced current ripples of sand at the bottom that were created by the canal's flowing water. Those are not sand dunes. So when we consider that the Sahara is clearly covered in vast measures of water erosion, the next question becomes how and when did this happen? Now this first look at the strange abundance of salt located throughout the Sahara Desert, which I have discussed previously. Many people are not aware that the Sahara provides vast amounts of salt trade throughout the region. This is something that is widely documented, and I have argued that the fact that this salt sits on top of the current ripples is suggestive evidence that the ocean had flowed over the region and the existing salt is the remnants of evaporated seawater that had settled here. For example, high concentrations of salt are found in the region surrounding Mauritania specifically, such as the Sekva salt mine in the capital of Nouakchott, located right at the coast, and can be seen as white blemishes from satellite imagery. All of that is salt. And I have of course shared the nature of salt found within the Rishot structure, and the areas with the most of it are all at the lowest elevations, thus suggesting that seawater had settled and eventually evaporated here. Another great example of this can be found as far away as the Eastern Sahara, where we have a nearly 100 mile wide patch of surface salt. You can take it upon yourself to go to Google Earth and can view the changes of elevation with your computer's mouse cursor and see firsthand that this salt patch sits on a depression and is at a lower elevation by a few hundred feet than the entire surrounding area. And when you take into account that this is in the midst of a clear path of massive water erosion as you can see in the striations, it becomes obvious that seawater had indeed settled here. So hold that thought as the next two pieces of evidence that I'm going to share are a total game changer in substantiating that this flooding erosion happened within the last 11 to 12,000 years. Because here's the thing. Many will dismiss all this water erosion as being related to what's referred to as the Trans-Saharan Seaway, which was said to exist approximately 56 to 66 million years ago. In fact, most scientific estimates lazily estimate that this was likely between 50 and 100 million years ago, which, let's be real, is a ridiculously large ballpark range of an estimate. But upon further investigation, you will notice that nowhere in these studies of the Trans-Saharan Seaway does it annotate that it had flowed over the Western Sahara Desert. It simply shows that it went south. However, Anyone can jump on Google Earth and clearly observe that there is confirmed water erosion over the exact areas annotated for this seaway, but here's the thing. The same water erosion clearly goes west out to the Atlantic Ocean as you've already noticed, which bizarrely these recent studies do not annotate whatsoever. Which is why I argue that something else happened far more recently than the Saharan Seaway of some 60 million years ago. And this is the part where things get extraordinarily interesting, because the highest point in the Sahara Desert is a volcano located in Chad called Emi Kusi, which reaches a height of 11,300 feet at its caldera, and is said to have been created during an eruption between 2 and 3 million years ago. However, the last known lava flow occurred at the south end of Emi Kusi approximately 12,000 years ago, give or take. But notice how it is positioned directly along the path of the catastrophic water erosion. In fact, it appears to cut right through this 12,000 year old lava flow right there at the south. You can literally notice the line of a path that the water took and essentially eroded and erased the portions of that lava flow. Which means that that flooding would have had to have happened after that flow of lava that is, by the way, scientifically documented to have occurred approximately 12,000 years ago. And not only that, this white blemish within Emikusi's caldera at 11,000 feet in elevation is not snow, it's salt. 
salt that is said to be the remains of an ancient lake that disappeared just thousands of years ago. Gee, where on earth did that saltwater lake come from, as obviously it would have had to have formed after the volcano's original eruption and creation, which again was some 2-3 million years ago, which is way more recent than the 60 or so million years ago that's been claimed for the last time that water flowed through the Sahara, which tells us that something else, something separate, happened to the Sahara Desert far more recently that has seemingly evaded the scientific community. But if that isn't smoking gun evidence enough, wait until you hear my third and final point of scientific evidence, which is nothing short of incredible. If there had been catastrophic ocean flooding through the Sahara, then it would certainly have pushed unfathomable amounts of debris and sediment out to the Atlantic Ocean, as that appears to be the path and flow of the flooding. So I did some investigating and I came across something very, very interesting, which is a study of the mapping of seafloor morphology off the coast of Mauritania. And get this, there is a massive seafloor slide called the Mauritania Slide, which I estimate from the legend on the lower right corner is at least 120 miles wide when going from north to south, and likely more than 400 miles wide when measuring from east to west. Make no mistake, this seafloor slide is unbelievably massive. And not only that, the seafloor sediment consists of stacked debris that measures at least a couple thousand meters, or just over a mile in depth. A truly astronomical amount of sediment. And this is the part that makes it so astoundingly interesting, which is the fact that the researchers of this study estimate that it is approximately 11,000 years old, and get this, is likely to have been created by a tsunami. The evidence is simply overwhelming that something extreme happened to the Sahara Desert far more recently than anyone thought possible, and the evidence is there for all who have eyes to see, or at least go looking for the information. And considering that it's been discovered in just the last several years that the Sahara Desert is not actually millions of years old as previously thought, it was actually a lush green tropical paradise with some of the largest freshwater lakes ever known to have existed and also consisted of a massive network of rivers until something happened between 11,000 and 5,000 years ago to turn it into the massive continental sized desert as we know it today. So it seems reasonable to surmise that all of this is likely related to the same event, or if nothing else, is a missing piece of the puzzle. So this brings me back to the question, which is, what on earth would have had to have happened to create a tidal wave or a tsunami over the Sahara to create current ripples that are so exponentially larger than the already massive ones found at Camas Prairie in Montana? Leave a comment and share your thoughts as this is something that should be worth a video in itself. Now with all of this said, my next video is going to be on the lost ancient city of Atlantis as it ties into the Rishat structure or Eye of the Sahara, which was supposed to be this video, but the video got so long with all the different information that I've been building and I realized that just proving that the ocean had blown through the Sahara far more recently was taking too much time up in that video. But I've come across several pieces of amazing information that I think is going to wow people and provides an unbelievably more compelling argument that the Rishat structure is indeed the lost ancient capital city of Atlantis, or at least the most likely location. So that video will be out in approximately the next week and a half. It's basically done, and I think people are going to be surprised by some of the details that are being added into this. So all that said, my name is Jimmy Corsetti. My channel is called Bright Insight. Leave a comment and share all your thoughts and everything that's discussed in this. I mean, between the water erosion going right through that volcano, between the fact that salt is on top of all of this, these current ripples in the sand itself throughout the Sahara, and not to mention the 11,000 year tsunami of sediments off the coast of Mauritania, clearly something happened here within that period of time. And it makes me wonder, where is the scientific and academic community in all this? I feel like these dots should have been connected much sooner based on a lot of this data existing for several years already. But that aside, I'll close it up. Again, my name is Jimmy. Stay tuned for that next Atlantis video real soon. Take care, everybody.